What's up my friends, this is Jake, bringing you another YouTube video. Now, I usually talk about Percy Jackson, we all know, uh, because it's an amazing series. But another pretty good series is Mango Cheese! Wait, no. Uh, Magnesium Chapstick! Dang it, what? Oh, Magnus Chase, that's the boy's name. Magnus Chase and Gods of Asgard. As we all know, or I would assume most of us, the last book, The Ship of the Dead, which is this one, came out in October, and I read it, and so I want to talk about it, uh, but I really didn't know, like, how to approach it, so if y'all don't remember, I made a, I made a video, a Magnus Chase, uh, The Ship of the Dead Hopes and Predictions video, about a week before the book actually came out, so I'm going to talk about how, how I did, like, was what I predicted right, or was it wrong, and how I feel, you know, about what actually happened. Warning, though, um, there are going to be some massive spoilers. So if you haven't read it and are planning to, I would suggest, you know, waiting until after you read the book and come back if you want to. So, yeah. so the first thing I talked about was relationships. And I remember pretty much saying, like, I don't care really about any relationships besides Mallory and Halfborn and Sam and Amr. And lo and behold, right from the start, Mallory and Halfborn have broken up. Really? Like, this is the only, it's the only ship I care about. What the heck is going on here? But, I mean, it really wasn't that bad uh, because even when they're broken up, they're still hilarious because it's kind of the same dynamic. I mean, they they still argue with each other all the time, either way. And it was pretty obvious that they were going to get back together at the end. So, you know, it's still funny just seeing them, like, yelling at each other and kind of trying to kill each other and then talking to Magnus about it. And then, so, it, it was still a good dynamic. It was just kind of funny because, like, that's the really the only ship I really, really care about in this book. You know, Sam and Amr, too, but those are, like, the only two. So I was like, really? Really, Rick? Really? But the other big ship here, uh, Magnus Chase and Alex Fierro, which I still don't know what is the right thing to the ship name. I know it's, like, some people call it Fierro Chase, but then some people call it Beatrice because Rick and his sass master self decided to just answer, hey, why don't we call it Beatrice? Which doesn't make any sense. But now... Whatever. It's the fandom, you know? It's just, we do crazy... I don't know. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so I predicted that this was going to happen. You know, it was going to come together. And wada bang, it did. Uh, I don't really think this was a surprise to anybody. You know, if you have any gift of forethought, like I do, uh, after reading Hammer of Thor, it was pretty blatantly obvious that this was going to happen. And boom, it did. Now, I said in my, my uh, earlier video, I don't ship it. Um, so it's really like, I knew it was going to happen, it happens, it's like, okay, but, uh, I know a lot of people do, and there were some moments that, like, if I was a Beatrice shipper, I would have been going wild, you know, for instance, that, that, uh, that part when they're freezing, you know, and going to that giantess's, uh, I forgot her name, that's pretty bad, but that giantess, giantess's, like, ice fortress, and they're all, like, dying of, like, hypothermia, and, uh, Alex and Magnus are like huddled and Alex just randomly like kisses him. Yeah, I know y'all, I know y'all fanboys and fangirls were going crazy. I, I know you were. Y'all going around screaming, oh my gosh, it's Conan! Fire the Conan! I know you were doing it. I know you're going crazy. It's okay. It's okay. You know, there's no shame in it. And that was a decent moment, I have to admit. That was a decent moment. And the next thing I said uh, was Percy Jackson's part. Now, Reading the Hammer of Thor, it is like, oh man, this is going to be epic, right? Oh, they're bringing in Percy Jackson. <laughs> Woo we know how that goes down. But I had a feeling, you know, I had a feeling that Rick was going to be his little troll self and not give us a su sufficient amount of Percy Jackson. And bang, I was right. And it kind of ticks me off how right I was. I mean, this is probably like the only Percybeth moments I actually didn't like, okay? Because for one, they are in it for 20 Measly pages. K20. 20. 20. <sighs> not epic. It's not epic. You know, Percy gave some Magnus some solid advice. You know, like keep your butt clenched when you're sailing. Solid advice. And they had some little group powwow sessions when they were talking to being all cutesy. But it really just, honestly, honest, honestly, it just felt like fan service. I mean, really here. Uh, like, it's, I was reading it, I was just like, okay, where have I seen this stuff? It's like, oh yeah, just, you know, fan people, you know, making canon, like, 
head cannons and stuff. Uh, it's like, for instance, they were talking about how Percy uh, has never, never, like, it took him, like, forever to know that his pen could write. You know, that is, that's stuff I see every day. You know? Well, maybe not every day, but a lot of times. And, like, Annabeth made a joke about how he drools in his sleep, which is what she's never repeated ever since the first time. But we always talk about it because it's adorable. But they never talk about it anymore because it was like a one-time thing, you know? So it just felt like, like Rick was just, like, trying to, you know, appease us, probably because of the fact that he wasn't going to put Percy in the book. But, you know, maybe... I don't know. I kind of feel like that's something, you know, the whole, like, fan service thing is... I don't know. I don't feel like that maybe bothered a lot of people, but it bothered me. But uh, the good thing is we did see Estelle, you know, little baby, baby, uh, Percy Jackson's baby sister, Estelle Blofus, or Blofus. How do you guys pronounce that name? I really don't know. Uh, but, so that's really cool. I hope we get to see his little baby sister at some point. Um, but yeah, so that's, that was definitely the highlight of the whole uh, little Percy's little cameo, I guess we could call it. And I did love the part when they're driving away and uh, Percy's singing Led Zeppelin. Just, oh. <sighs> good times. I, I love some good Percy Beth. You know, we better see some more. <sighs> and then Loki, how is this guy gonna go down? And I did predict that he would be imprisoned again, which did happen. Uh, not really a shocker. Now, Loki as a whole, his character, uh, you know, I don't really want to spread a bunch of negativity, but I, where was Loki? Where was Loki? I mean, he was weak, 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 this book. I mean, Sword of Summer, that guy is like, whew. Hammer of Thor, that guy's like, whew. Ship of the Dead, barely in it. Barely in it. He, he freaks out Magnus and dreams a couple times. At this point, it's kind of getting stale. And then uh, he just has a little insult war, and that's literally, like, all he does. And he loses. And, you know, it's just Loki's character. I felt like he had a lot of buildup. A lot, a lot of buildup, especially after the Hammer Thor, you know, when he, uh, when he comes out of his chains and he's like, oh yeah, come on, come on in Harry, you, you can do it. But we all know like, oh man, they're about to get their butt whoops, butts whooped. Um, but then he's like, where's Loki? You know, it's just a lot of buildup. And can we just talk about the, the fact that Magnus Chase pulled the Selena Gomez and killed him with kindness kindness okay you didn't actually kill him okay but like they had a flighting which is like when you're supposed to like insult the other person and Magnus Chase is like oh yeah <laughs> well my friends are cool you know half born has a great beard you know Mallory oh she kicks some butt that's not actually what he said but that's pretty much he just complimented his friends which is a great it's a great thing it's a lovely heartfelt good thing and I, I appreciate that you know, sunflowers and roses, good, good stuff. Uh, but it just kind of felt like, you know, that's, that's how we're going to end this book, you know, with, uh, with Magnus complimenting his friends. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't really bad, uh, but it wasn't just like, it wasn't like the epic ending I was hoping for. Um, but maybe you guys feel different about it. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, but it was cool seeing all of them like standing around tiny, Tiny Loki, like, nah, fool, you ain't, you ain't leaving us, you know, bop, you know, kicking, uh, they didn't actually kick him, but I wish they did, just went to bop, but, uh, and I really wish they'd let Thor, like, just crush him <laughs> at the end, but Thor's like, come on, let me stop, but it didn't have, but it was still cool, you know, seeing them all kind of team up, and, uh, I liked the fact that they were all together, um, that Mallory, like, the other and Harry, like, Mallory and Halfborn and, uh, TJ, I gotta be a part of it, so I liked, I liked all that, but, the ultimate ending and Loki just kind of like, eh. But, and, uh, it's not really a terrible thing. But like I said, I expect a little more. And then I talk about deaths. And, uh, I predicted that no one would die. And, boom, I was right. No one died. So, so that's cool. Uh, there really wasn't any significant death scenes in this book at all. Like, in me or. Uh, there was that cool scene where, uh, uh, TJ killed that one giant and then TJ got like a random shrapnel in his head which I thought was going to be a significant thing um, but it's not he just has a piece of shrapnel in his head that he can start fires with 
So, okay. Uh, but then there was the Alderman scene. Oof, oof. When Alderman was like the creepy dragon, you know, the ring, ring dragon. I don't know why I'm doing this. He can't fly. Um, but then, so that was a big scene, you know, and when, uh, when Hearth brought back his ghost brother, who that, that was a pretty, that was a good scene. Um, that was a good scene. Um, pretty, pretty deep and touching. Um, and I liked how Magnus, you know, was the bro and killed, uh, Alderman for him. And then now Magnus can talk to animals. <laughs> so that's another kind of like, okay, that's cool. But yeah, besides that, there weren't really any deaths, which is pretty, uh, predictable. Like I said, you know, Rick will kill characters at times. But he never really kills the main ones. And, um, so yeah, that, there's not much more to say about that. And then the ending. I predicted that Rick would be his troll self and leave some cliffhangers. And what a bang, he leaves some cliffhangers. Now, Rick has said he's done with the Mang Chase series. It's done, so it's a trilogy. Ain't going any more further. But, uh, I did say, like, but he would leave the door open for some stuff if he wanted to, which he did, which came in the form of Magnus talking about, oh, he's going to go down to Helheim one day and check on his mom and see how things are going down there. Uh, so that sounds cool. Maybe we'll get a little, like, uh, like short story or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe like a crossover. You know, I really, yeah, I'm good with just, I don't really want any of that. I'm good with just being kind of like skeptical, like just thinking about it. But he, he has left that door open if he wanted to. And then, but the big thing, big thing, okay, is Magnus made a call to Annabeth, and there's some, Annabeth sounded distressed, right? She sounded distressed, you know, she was talking to, she was, uh, you know, Percy, you know, things were going, he said, she said, like, Percy's as good as he has good be expected, and they're in California, okay, which is where Camp Jupiter is, okay, which is where Jason and Piper and all those people are at right now. And Frank and Hazel. So it's kind of like, yeah, oh, what's going on? What's going on, Rich? Rick? And uh, so that's, uh, yeah, not really a surprise that Rick did that to us, the little troll, the little uh, little sass master. But, uh, yeah, we got that to, to see. But it does kind of leave like, oh, wow, you know, is Percy and Annabeth going to be part of the future of Charles Apollo? So hopefully, and hopefully they get more than 20 pages. So to wrap it up, you know, I don't think this was the, the, uh, like the strongest book, uh, of all of Rick's stuff. You know, there was some, some, uh, like I said, the ending really wasn't, uh, all what it was hyped up to be and all of that. But overall, it was a good fun read. Uh, it was, it was fast paced. It was a nice, easy read. Uh, this was like, I've, I've ended up reading like the last like 200 pages and like the, uh, one night, which I know for you guys is probably nothing. I know you guys probably do that all the time, but I don't, I never do that anymore. It's been forever since I've done that. So, and I, but I did it with this one because it just kind of races off. And, uh, so that part, it was a really good read. Uh, and I enjoyed reading it and I'm sure you guys did too. It was, uh, it wasn't like the best book, but it was, it was a good book and I enjoyed reading it. I'm glad I read it and, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it was a fun video, and I hope you guys have an awesome day, or night, where, whatever, wherever you are.